I'm Tristan Ramsey. I'm Christopher Lampman. I'm Ryan Hutka. I'm Matt Nixon. I'm Kelly Apple. I'm Ethan Case. I am Max Krieger. I am Anthony Morris. I am Jack Deerig. I'm Charlotte Schaefer. I'm Colin Padgett. I'm McGuire Merrill. I'm Tristan Schultz. I'm Lily Salas. I'm Jackie Bennett. I'm Trevor Coleman. And I'm Macy Granger. This is Nice News! In our first story, Jack Deerig looks into options for seniors after graduation. With senior year coming to a close, there are a lot of options for our seniors here at Grays Lake Village. Today, we're going to be looking into all the different opportunities available after high school. One thing seniors can choose to do is attend a four-year college or university after high school to continue their education. All right, I'm going to go to the University of Dubuque to pursue my education psychology and also run track there. And after four years, I was planning on going to try and enter the graduate program at Purdue University and get my doctorate there. One of the drawbacks to attending college right after high school is that it can be very expensive. Also, it's not for everyone. There are many other options, such as entering the workforce, joining the military, going to a trade school, or starting out at a community college after high school. So pretty much immediately after high school, I intend on uh, start working. I'll probably get a job out on the uh, Channel Lakes, um, just doing basic boat maintenance and just working out of the uh, dock hand. Um, that'll go into the fall, where I'll probably do uh, shrink wrapping and basic uh, winterization for boats. And then after that, I'll probably take a couple winter classes at CLC, and I'm not too sure after the spring. So my plan for after high school is most likely to go to CLC for two years, uh, just get the gen ends out of the way, and most likely transfer to uh, four year after to work on some form of engineering, whether it be mechanical or electrical. But a uh, dream job would be to be a roller coaster engineer, so that's really my main goal. So there you have it. There are plenty of options for seniors after high school, and you can always go down to the College and Career Center to find out more. Thanks, Jack. Next, Charlotte Schaefer explores Teacher Appreciation Week. The week of Monday, May 2nd is Teacher Appreciation Week, and you can definitely tell from looking around the school. For students, Teacher Appreciation Week is a time to celebrate the faculty. But what does it mean to teachers? I think Teacher Appreciation Week is uh, something that we all look forward to every year, and it's uh, well-timed at the end of the year. Um, and I think it's just, uh, you know, lots of free stuff <laughs> from different uh, restaurants. They always uh, treat us well. We get a free lunch today. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just something a little that uh, shows that we really are appreciated. Not that that's not happening throughout the school year, um, but little rewards and, and things like that are, are really nice. And, and we appreciate it, and as I said, especially toward the end of the year. It's a good thing and keeps us going. One way that students played a role this week was by making posters to thank the staff for everything that they do. Teacher Appreciation Week is just a week that I feel like teachers really feel loved. We work our tails off, I think, all year. And I know you guys appreciate us and love all the extra help we give you. But sometimes once in a while, it's like we just love that extra attention, that extra thanking to us. The posters that are on our doors are phenomenal. The emails we receive, the little gifts we get in our mailbox just makes our day. It just makes us happy and really appreciate our job and just appreciate you guys as kiddos. By simply looking at the posters that are on almost every wall, it is easy to see that there is much appreciation for the staff, even outside of Teacher Appreciation Week. And speaking of appreciating staff members... We had a couple real-life Batmen in our school recently. Lee Salas gives us the details. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's a bat. Panic rose to a dangerously high rate as a bat flew through the halls of Grace Lake North. Let's talk to someone who was a key witness. I'm here with Jerry Lucas, a senior who was a brief witness to the bat. Jerry, can you talk a little bit about your experience? I saw Dr. E chasing the bat in the hallway. It was loud. I was in film on the second floor and there was a bunch of people like chasing something, didn't know what it was, and then somebody came in and was like, there's a bat in the hallway. 
and that was about it. How are you feeling when you heard the news that there's a bat in the hallway? I was shook. That was the second time this has happened in my experience. In 2019, there was a bat in the band room. The second time? Grace Lake North has a serious bat problem. How could we get to the bottom of this? I honestly felt it was kind of odd to see a bat inside of the school, no less in this area, since there aren't that many cave-like structures around Grays Lake. I think main, one major solution is to first find out what type of bat it was, and then just to do the research on what mainly attracts it. Some bats are attracted to the food they eat, some are attracted to different smells or different hearings. So I feel like it's just a possibility of just narrowing down the search pattern. Some brilliant heroes emerged that day to put in efforts to stop the bat from flying around Grays Lake North High School. So I was talking to Ms. Dodd briefly and she mentioned that there was a bat in school and so um, I of course was curious and it was during my off period so uh, I went to found it, find it and then of course I found it actually right in this area right where I am now. I saw some things <laughs> where you were trying to throw your shoes and socks at the bat. I can talk about that. Okay, so just to clarify, I never threw any shoes at the bat. I did throw my socks at the bat. One of my friends told me that if you get a bat in your house, and you take a balled up inside out sock and you throw it at it, that the bat can um, get caught on the sock and it's a kind of safe way and more of a kind way to get the bat out of your house without hurt, hurting or injuring the bat. And so that's what I was doing. I was trying to um, safely take care of the bat without injuring the bat. Did, it, did the sock method work or no? The sock method did not work despite the fact that I was able to actually uh, make contact with the bat with my sock. I, I was only in an assistance mode. It was, I have to give all credit to Mr. Hayes for capturing the bat in the butterfly net. Nobody knows why the bat came or why it left as quickly as it did. Did it get the vengeance that it needed? We may never know. But for now, we demand that Grace Lake North does something about the bat situation. Thankfully, no one was harmed. But will it be back for more? Who knows? I would like to give a shout out and a big thank you from one of Grace Lake North students to all the staff members who helped take the bat outside. It was right here on that fateful day that lives were changed forever. Thank you. Thanks, Lily. Did she say butterfly net? I guess. To everyone's relief, AP exams are now over, but they were on a lot of students' minds for the past couple weeks. Max Krieger and Jack Dierig investigate. At Grays Lake North High School, AP students have been preparing all year for the AP exams. These exams measure the proficiency of skills and content from AP classes. With us today, we have junior Peyton Chumbly to talk about her experience with AP classes and tests. What AP classes are you in? I'm in AP Environmental Science. And how do you feel about the class? Do you enjoy it? Is it fun? I do enjoy the class. Um, it is really fun for me. Uh, Mr. Rogo lets us kind of engage however we want, and then we all just learn from each other. Um, and I know the AP exam for that class was last week. Did you take it? Yes, I did. And how did that go? Like, what was your experience with that? I thought it was really easy. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. It was easy. Everyone I everyone I talked to had the pretty much the same experience. So you recommend taking it? I do recommend taking it. All right, that's great. Thanks for talking with us today. In our next story, Anthony checks back in with the Mental Health Matters group. Hello, GNHS. As mental health becomes an issue in today's modern society, and more celebrities such as Serena Williams come out about their mental health struggles, we asked Varun Gulapali about Mental Health Matters Okay, so Mental Health Matters is a student-led support group that's by students for students. Um, our main thing is just asking questions, having activities, and just really creating a safe space where students are comfortable to share. Uh, where and when does it meet? Um, we meet usually Tuesdays um, mornings. We're trying to move that to afternoons. Um, our last meeting of the year for like a send-off, we're going to be doing sidewalk chalk after school just by positive messages. Who runs Mental Health Magic? Matters? Um, me and my friend Bella Moran, we co-run it, uh, yeah. 
Uh, why is mental health important? Uh, mental health is really important because I mean it affects us each and every day. Like it affects how we sleep, when we sleep, what we do, our mood. So it's really important to be mindful of that and to make sure that in addition to feeling better physically, we feel better mentally. If you join Mental Health Matters, do you have to talk? No, you don't have to talk. You feel comfortable sharing what you want to share, hearing what you want to hear. We try to create a safe space as much as possible. And sometimes that's just staying there and hearing other people and their experiences. We do hope that you open up eventually, but everyone shares at their own pace. And so, yeah, we encourage you to come no matter who you are. Nice work, Anthony. They do a lot of important work. Thanks. And yes, they do. And speaking of people who do important work, I'm not sure anyone does more important work around here than Miss D. Fiori. Macy Granger sat down with Mrs. D. to talk about her retirement. The Queen of Grays Lake North, Miss Lori D. Fiori, is retiring, and this is what she has to say about her journey at Grays Lake North. So 15 years ago, what started out as a job ended up being um, a family. Um, I like to consider all my former students my kids, and current students are also my kids. Everybody gets mommed if, uh, if they run into me. Um, and staff is just basically, you know, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, just depending. And um, we have a great time. I love this atmosphere at this school. I love the culture. Um, and I feel that uh, it's a great place to be. After retirement, um, I am going to enjoy my first summer off in 13 years by doing some camping um, and uh, seeing some friends and being able to uh, spend time with people or more time with people outside of my Grace Lake North family. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, also maybe a little golf. So I am going to miss the people. I'm going to miss coming here every day and having um, wonderful conversations with um, staff and students. I am going to miss the hectic days. I am going to miss the uh, crazy adventures that we've been on as a team here in the administration department. But I'm also going to miss um, lacrosse and football and I'm hoping Miss Willard lets me work a couple of games here and there. As senior year is winding down, we asked a bunch of seniors at the school what their favorite memory of high school was. Uh, my favorite memory in North was when we were down two touchdowns in the fourth quarter and beat Central my sophomore year. My favorite memory in high school is um, going to state for track last year. It was really fun. My favorite memory of high school was when CT performed at the homecoming pep rally, I think. That was fun. Uh, my favorite memory of high school is when winter break this year, me and my friends took a road trip down to Florida to see my other friend that moved down, and it was really fun. My favorite memory of high school was announcing the big game. Um, my favorite memory of high school was sophomore year when Mr. Gunlow would send me and my friend Jenny on like adventures or just like running errands for him. Uh, so my favorite moment or memory of high school is just our gym class this year. I have so many friends in there. We just have so much fun. <laughs> All right, so my favorite memory of high school overall would be playing lacrosse with my best friends for four years. But if I had to pick a specific game, it uh, would be recently when we traveled uh, up to Middleton, two hours away. Uh, we got the win in overtime. Uh, we stopped by some Colburns uh, after the game, and then we drove two hours back home. I hope all you guys make good memories after high school also. That brings this year's final episode of Night's News to a close. We hope you've enjoyed watching us. We've definitely enjoyed bringing you the news. Happy